Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, today, as we are here in the presence of God, remember we were having a Bible study on the book of Exodus, and we have reached the chapter 28. We have completed 27. Now we have reached to Exodus chapter 28. And as we reflect these uh, chapters, we are understanding the whole theology of Christianity. Why Jesus came to this earth and what is his mission and everything is getting clearer and clearer, more clearer uh, as we study this Bible study on Exodus. So today is 28th chapter. It is speaking about the, new, the priesthood, the priesthood of Old Testament and about the, how the vestments should be. If you check the vestments of the priesthood mentioned here in the gospel, I mean the book of Exodus, it is almost similar to the vestments that the bishops wear today in the Catholic Church. So almost all the things, even the mitre, the the uh, the mantle, the vestments, every other everything is uh, one way or the other, directly or indirectly mentioned in this chapter. So and also there is uh, so many meanings for each step, each vestments, each thing that is worn in the body has got so many meanings. So I don't want to go into deep of uh, all these small small points and small small meanings of each step of these priestly dress vestments. But I would like to speak to you about this priesthood. Because there are so many people who still believe that there is no more priesthood in the New Testament. There is priesthood only in the Old Testament. So this is something many uh, denominations propagate and all they also speak. They reject the priesthood in the New Testament. They, uh, may, they, may, they have to accept the priesthood in the Old Testament because they, it is there clearly. But they doubt the priesthood in the New Testament even though it is clearly mentioned in the Bible. So we are going to see what exactly this priesthood is. Because Bible says very clearly, all the people of Israel is priestly nation. They all are royal priestly nation. Remember, always remember, the priesthood has got as two types of priesthood has entered into this uh, world. One is the priesthood of in succession. God, when he created Adam and Eve, God gave his priestly ministry to Adam. So that is there in the beginning. That, so from Adam, all the firstborns were considered as uh, uh, have got a priestly ministry. But at the same time, all the people are participating in the royal priestly ministry of God the Father. But that is why when Israelites were in the Egypt, when they had the first Passover, the first Passover meal was celebrated by every individual in their own homes. The head of the family is the one who is presided over the Passover meal in every family. So Passover was celebrated in each family during the time of Israel who were, when, we, when they were in Egypt. But later, as they saved from Egypt, they crossed over the Red Sea and they started moving through the wilderness. And there was a mistake they committed. These firstborns, these sons of Adam and Eve, they committed a terrible sin, the sin of worshipping a calf, golden calf. When they com com committed this terrible sin of idolatry, worshipping a golden calf, thinking that that is the God, and worshipped it, and then God uh, forbade everyone from having a ministerial priesthood and handed over the ministerial priesthood only for the Levites who are son, the sons of Aaron and said only you should be doing the ministerial priest, priest to priestly ministry from now on. And that is why after that no more the people in their tents are allowed to celebrate Passover. The Passover has to be celebrated in the tabernacle by the priests. Priest. Only they have to sacrifice the animal uh, and then take the blood and sprinkle it and the body can be taken by each family and then roast and eat it as a Passover meal. But the sacrifice has to be done by only the priest. Only the priests were allowed to do that. And when you go through this Bible passage, we, everything is made clear for us. And then that priestly ministry is restricted only to Aaron and his sons. Last yesterday, the, the, other, the other day, we discussed about Korah, the Levites, other, other, some other priest. There are, the, they rebelled against Moses and Aaron because only the sons of Aaron are supposed to are allowed to go inside the tent. Other Levites' children, uh, they are allowed only in the court, not allowed to go inside the tent. That is why they rebelled and said, we are also holy, why can't we go there? Then God said, that is special priesthood and you are Levite priesthood, you, you stay here. This is priestly ministry, don't covet priesthood also. You are already doing a service. You are already doing a ministry. So don't covet the priesthood also that is given only to them. And now you be satisfied with this. So this is what we saw the other day. 
and we uh, read in the book of numbers chapter 16 we read it uh, what god has already spoken to them and if you connect all these things in the new testament you can see the same hierarchical structure so those the sons of Le sons of aaron who are levites plus sons of aaron who were allowed to go inside the tent of meeting they are the prefiguration of the new testament priesthood the levites who were only serving outside only serving at the uh, at the sacrifice they are the prefiguration of the deacons in the new testament so uh, that is how the, we can see the differences and that is um, uh, and then if you see look into the old testament you can also see a hierarchical structure because when god saved israel it's from egypt and they were going through the promised land as it going to the promised land then there is a connection with god is maintained first moses is having highest connection along just below moses there is a leader for all the priest that is uh, aaron and along with aaron there are three people nadab abihu the sons of uh, aaron so uh, aaron nadab abihu and then just below that they have 12 elders the 12 leaders of the 12 tribes and then below that there are 70 elders 70 elders elders means um presbyters presbyteros that is in greek language presbyters and from this word priest comes so we can see a group of uh, selected people the same hierarchy you can see if, if you look into the old testament at the top moses below him there is aaron then after that you can see the three people aaron nadab and abihu three people then below that 12 up 12 leaders of the tribes and then below that 70 elders if you come to the new testament you can see on the top jesus the new moses then below him the leader of the apostles peter and along with peter there are three people who are very close to jesus peter john and james who were always present in the most important services always whenever they had a god experience for example on mount tabor transfiguration these three were there just like when moses had a experience on mount sinai there were three people with him especially the leaders moses i mean uh, aaron nadab and abihu so the same way in mount tabor jesus along with jesus peter john and james three people and then you can see the 12 apostles then below that we can see the 70 elders so these seven this is the structure you can see in the old testament and new testament we don't know whether it's a coincidence and we can't just say anything that is in the bible is not coincidence it's all planned so if god has not plan of it he could have selected instead of 70 elders he could have selected any other number but jesus selected 70 purposely and jesus selected 12 purposely jesus selected three of his beloved disciples so close to him only for mount tabor experience and special experiences he didn't take all of them but he took only three of them just like moses took three of them along with him whenever he went to god experience these are all not coincidence these are all it's plan of god it has to be like that so now there is another problem um these israelites when they came to the promised land they established there they were carrying the tabernacle all over the all throughout the journey when they reached the promised land they settled the tabernacle in jerusalem in the form of jerusalem temple and this jerusalem temple is established there then the whole jewish people used to come to jerusalem temple every thrice in every year every year three times they used to visit this place and all these whatever that we have discussed in the past were taking place in the temple and now there are two tragedies happened terrible tragedies of course three tragedies but now we will mention only two tragedies the but the third tragedy happened after the death of jesus the first two tragedies assyrian invasion assyrians came and attacked israel and almost 10 tribes were taken away out of 12 tribes 10 tribes were taken away and they disappeared we don't know even today these 10 tribes have no clue no we have no trace of these 10 tribes we don't know what happened and only two tribes were remaining the two tribes of benjamin and judah and they were called israel sorry the the, the kingdom of judah the rest of the 10 tribes were normally called israel but they were all disappeared the kingdom of juda remained these two uh, tribes later after the assyrian invasion maybe around after 500 years there was another invasion called babylonian invasion this time these two tribes also taken away and total uh, all the 12 tribes were in the 10 tribes have disappeared and now the two tribes are also taken away for captivity to babylon so these were the tragedies that happened in the life of israel and after that during those days isaiah jeremiah ezekiel all these prophets came and then when they were very disappointed frustrated they were losing hope in god and they were wondering where is this mighty god who saved us from egypt 
Where is this? Where is this mighty God who divided the Red Sea and to, took us to the, uh, the wilderness? Where is this God? This was a big question mark in front of them. Just like many people ask today, where is this God? The people are suffering, pandemic, this problem, that problem. Where is this God? The same experience Israel also went through when they were in captivity under Babylon. They thought Babylon's God is very powerful and that's why we are defeated. So this is how there was an existential crisis for God in Israel. They doubted, really they doubted whether this is the true God. Then that is when God sent Isaiah and Jeremiah and said, don't worry, I'm going to bring everyone back. All your tribes will be brought back. All the 12 tribes will be brought back. Not only 12 tribes, all the nations will be brought back. Now God is revealing his plan of salvation, universal salvation. Until then, Israel thought only, uh, Israel's, Israelites thought only they will be saved. Only they will be honored. Only they will be protected. But then, at this time, God is revealing his universal plan of salvation. He says, not only all these tall tribes, along with all tall tribes, the whole humanity will be brought to me. Everyone will come from all the nations and they will honor me. They will respect me. And then, I will establish a priestly ministry and Levite priest. See, priestly ministry and Levite priest is already gone. And God says, I'm going to establish a new priestly ministry and Levite priesthood. That means in the New Testament, we can say the new priesthood and deacon, diaconate. So I'm going to establish this priestly ministry and new uh, the Levite ministry once and for all. I'll establish it when I bring them together. So there is a prophecy about the New Testament priesthood and diaconate already in the Old Testament. That's why we have New Testament. There is presbyters, the elders and the deacons were uh, inaugurated in the Acts of the Apostle. It is biblical. Now we are going to see the prophecy in the Old Testament. Let us read this prophecy which God said to Israelites through Isaiah. God said like this, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 18 onwards. For I know their works and their thoughts and I am coming to gather all nations and tongues. God says, he is giving encouragement for all the Israelites who are in the captivity. God is encouraging them. Don't worry my men. Don't worry people. Don't worry my children. I know your works and your thoughts. Now I am coming. He said, I am coming. I am coming. God himself is coming. So far he was sending prophets. He was sending Moses, judges, kings and queens and everyone. But now he says, I myself will gather. I myself will gather, I am coming to gather all nations and tongues, not only the 12 tribes, through 12 tribes, I am going to gather all nations. That is why Jesus, when he gathered 12, 12 disciples, he said, you will sit on 12, 12 seats, 12 thrones and you will rule over the whole world and Israel. So the new Israel means it's not only Jewish people, but also all the nations. The Holy Catholic Church or the Holy Church is the uh, new Israel where all the nations come together. You know, in the church, we have not only Jewish people, but also all the, all the continents, all the countries, in every country, every tongue, every language, people who join in this church. This is called ingathering of his people. Unfortunately, Israel is still waiting for that ingathering. But at the same time, it has already happened 2000 years ago. For I know their works and their thoughts and I am coming to gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and shall see my glory. They will see my glory. That glory was seen on Mount Calvary. Verse 19. And I will set a sign among them. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send survivors to the nations. To Tarshish, Put and Lud and which draw the bow to Tubal and Java and to the coastlands far away. That have... Continue. That have, they shall bring all your kindred from all. Okay, let's read verse 19. Away that have, continue. Not heard from my fame or seen my glory. They shall declare my glory among the nations. So I will send, every nations will come together. They will see my glory. From there I will send everyone to all the corners. And these people will go as a missionaries to everywhere. And declare my glory among all the nations. Missionary work of the disciples. It is already foreseen. As per the Jewish religion, in the Old Testament, we, saw, we will see never see any mention about a missionary work. Because they are not supposed to do missionary work. Because they are supposed to be a closed community. Blessed, blood relationship. And they don't accept anyone. They are closed community in according to Jewish religion. But here God is proclaiming a missionary work. A prophesying about these people who see my glory will go to every nation and proclaim my glory among all the nations. Missionary work is also foreseen and prophesied. Verse 20, we read. They shall bring all your kindred from all the nations. 
So all your, you know, there are so many of these tall tribes are gone to different nations. All are scattered, and they all will be brought back. All will be brought. All bring all your kindred from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. They will be bringing as an offering. What kind of offering? Thanksgiving offering. In you, in Greek, it is called Eucharistia. They will bring offerings, Thanksgiving offering. That means Eucharist. On horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on uh, dromedaries and to my holy mountain, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring a grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. Just as the grain offering, the holy bread, bread offering, verse 21. And then he says, and I will also take some of them as priests and as Levites, says the Lord. All those who come from different nations, I will take some of them as priests and Levites. God is prophesying about the future ministry, how the new Israel will be like. God says the new Israel will not be limited to one nation. It will be, it will be spread to all the nations. And the missionaries will be going to all the countries to glorify. And they will all come to me for the Thanksgiving offering, Eucharist. And then I will take some of them as priests and Levites. Prophecy about the, the New Testament priesthood. Is already there in the Old Testament. The priest and Levites. Why the difference between priests? The priests are the one who are cel celebrating the sacrifice, proper sacrifice, who go inside the tent. The Levites are the assistants who are assisting. For example, in Jerusalem, Jerusalem temple, when the, they kill the animals, when the priest kill the animals, sacrifice the animals, they used to have lots of blood everywhere because so many sacrifices. And then the Levites are the ones who are spreading the salt and other things and cleaning those areas. So the Levites... But the local people, the other people are not allowed to go inside those areas. But the Levites are the ones who are doing all these kinds of small, small ministries and serving at the altar, serving the priest who are sacrificing. So that is why the difference between priests and Levites. And even priests are also sons of uh, uh, Levites. But at the same time, they are sons of Aaron. Therefore, that is, that they are separate ones. Priest and Levites means priest and deacons in New Testament term. And we can see another test, another prophecy in the Bible about the New Testament priesthood. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6 onwards. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6 onwards. God is telling through Jeremiah, he told the people, I am going to bring it recovery and healing because they already gone through wounds. They are already in captivity. They are slaves. And God is telling them, I am going to bring it recovery and healing. I will heal them. And I will reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. God is promising them abundance of prosperity and security. And verse 7. We read like this. I will restore the fortunes of Judah and fortunes of Israel. Because Judah and Israel are already destroyed. Through the Assyrian invasion, Israel was destroyed. Babylonian invasion, Judah is destroyed. Uh, Israel means 10 tribes. Judah means 2 tribes. Both 12 tribes are destroyed. And God says, I will restore the fortunes of these 2 nations. And rebuild them as they were at first. Rebuild them. I will rebuild them. Remember, truly speaking, if you take everything literally, they are not rebuilt even now. All the, told, the tribes have not come back to Israel. And, but at the same time, Jesus rebuilt it by bringing the tall, tall tribes through the tall disciples and reaching out to the whole nations and making all of them his disciples. In fact, Jesus is rebuilding it. So verse 8, we read like this, verse 8. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me. See, when the Messiah comes, when there is an ingathering happens, there is also one special thing happens, not only in gathering, but forgiveness of sin. I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. All the sin will be washed. See, there is a speciality. What will be the speciality of the coming of the Messiah? When the Messiah comes, when the in gathering happens, the guilt, the sin will be washed away. I will wash them. We know what happened on Mount Calvary when Jesus, the Messiah, came to this world. He cleansed our sins, forgave our sins. Guilt is removed. And verse 9. And this city shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and glory before all the nations of the earth who shall hear of all the good that I do for them. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the prosperity I provide for it. So he's speaking about the glory for future. Verse 10. Let's read. Thus says the Lord, in this place of which you say it is a waste without human beings or animals, in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without inhabitants, human or animal, there shall once more be heard. See, Already these places are desolate because of the Babylonian invasion. But once more be heard. What is that heard? Continue. Once more be heard. No, uh, the previous one was 10. Continue the next one. Once more be heard. The voice of mirth and the voice of gladness. The voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Praise the Lord. 
why you bridegroom and bride comparison is brought here today i mean in this old testament because there is no any other mention about bridegroom and bride in the old testament here god says once more you will hear the voice of the bridegroom and also the bride in the new testament jesus himself considers himself as a bridegroom and the church is bride and this voice will be heard in this place in jerusalem this preaching will be heard the preaching of the bridegroom will be announced so the voices of those who sing as they bring thank offering to the house of the lord why thanks offering thank thank offering means eucharist so the singing and eucharistic singing will be heard this singing is not there in the Euchar in the old testament sacrifice but in the new testament eucharist that is thanks offering there will be singing the people will be singing Look at the New Testament Eucharist. We have singing and the praise and worship that is taking place in the New Testament. This was not the case in the Old Testament. There is a difference between all the sacrifices. There is no mention about blood sacrifice here. Thank offering. Because there is only one blood sacrifice. That is Jesus' death on Mount Calvary. Verse 12. We read like this. Give thanks to the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good for his steadfast love endures forever. I will restore the fortunes of the land as at first says the Lord. God is promising them again and again. I will restore, I will restore, I will restore. Don't worry. There will be thanks, off thanks offering and there will be singing and worshipping. And then verse 12 we read. Thus says the Lord of hosts in this place that is waste without human beings or animals because everyone is taken away from Babylon. In all its towns there shall again be pasture for shepherds resting their flocks. In all the towns there will be pastor for shepherds resting their flocks there will be pastors i mean the shepherds and then there will be flocks in all the towns god is foreseeing the parishes god is prophesying the future parishes in all the cities around the world god is looking at the whole world as a jerusalem city and then in all the whole world in every city there is the flock led by shepherds the word shepherd and flock comes in the old testament it is not a New Testament ideology or a New Testament simile, but it is from the Old Testament. It is a fulfillment of the prophecy. That is why Jesus said that I am the good shepherd, Jesus said, which you will not see in anywhere in the Old Testament. Verse 13, we read like this. In the towns of the hill country of the Shephala and of the Negev, in the land of Benjamin, the places around Jerusalem and in the towns of Judah, flocks shall again pass under the hands of the one who counts them, said the Lord. Everyone will be counted. Everyone will be registered. As we all know, in the Catholic Church, there are so many parishes. And there each parish has got a shepherd. And each flock is counted. And his address and every detail is counted. Everyone in the Catholic Church has got an identity in the church. And they all are counted and registered in every parish. The, all these details are already prophesied in the Old Testament. Let's read verse 14. Verse 14. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will fulfill all the promises. The days are coming about prophesying about future. Verse 15. In those days, at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, he's speaking about Jesus, the branch of David. He's speaking about Jesus, the branch of David. That means... G this Old Testament Bible passage of Jeremiah is a prophecy about the New Testament. Especially that the new Israel which is established by Jesus. And then verse 16. We read like this. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Verse 17. For thus says the Lord. David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. So now the two prophecies. One is that David's throne will never be empty. The throne of David will never be empty. If you go to Israel, the throne is not seen, it's empty. Then what is this throne? Jesus said, I am the son of David. And Jesus, when Jesus was born, angel Gabriel said, he will sit on the throne of his ancestor David and his kingdom will last forever. That means that throne of David will never be empty because Jesus is sitting on the throne. That is forever. And then next one, verse 18. That's kingdom. The throne will be, not be empty. Then what is it? The Levitical priest shall never lack a man in my presence to offer burnt offerings, to make grain offering and to make sacrifice for all time. Even the priesthood of the Old Testament priesthood, the similar priesthood will never lack. What does it mean? This priesthood also I will continue. Praise the Lord. And they will offer thanksgiving offering, grain offering and burnt offerings. Praise the Lord. This priesthood also will continue. God has already prophesied. If you go to Israel, the Levitical priest is no more there. Then where is this priesthood now? 
if god said it will never lack it is going to be permanent it is forever the throne is not seen in jerusalem in israel but we saw the throne is in jesus and jesus is sitting on that then what about levitical priest we don't see in jerusalem the priesthood is no more there in israel then where is this priesthood is continuing today these two types of levitical priesthood the priesthood of the service and priesthood of uh, uh, levite priesthood and the priesthood who is serving in the uh, inside the tent these two priesthood are called levitical priest and this priesthood is continued in the catholic church in the church forever for eternity praise the lord and let's read once again verse 18 and the levitical priest shall never lack a man in my presence to offer burnt offerings that is why there is no woman priest to be permitted because there is a prophecy of it to make grain offerings and to make sacrifices for all time so that is why my dear brothers and says my dear brothers and sisters this priesthood which the catholic church preaches i have already told you sometime back there is a talk about priesthood in the old testament and new testament did jesus establish priesthood there are some talks available in the youtube which we have given so along with in that line please do uh, listen to this talk also and then you will get a, a greater picture of the priestly ministry of the new testament ministry new testament priesthood and the catholic priesthood will be explained to you in detail if you have this study on these two all these areas so my dear brothers and sisters therefore do not doubt the church believe and trust the church blindly because the church has got the rich heritage and treasure of the faith let's close our eyes and sing together the offer to him